Hey, hey, my creative friends, Shannon from Shannon Studio. And we talk about a creative lifestyle, creative tips to help have that creative lifestyle. And we kind of have a real broad, broad uh, topic area as long as it has to do with creativity and your, our creative lives. So um, I've been doing videos, this is uh, I think 178, so 178 days in a row I've been doing videos. And I've been thinking about doing this little thing that I'm going to start. I've been thinking about it for a little while. And I think it's a good time. So we are. And it's going to be free for all, free for all Friday. And I did this on a blog I did a long time ago. I think like 10 years ago. Um, I started out and I did it for a while. And it was really fun for me. And I think it was fun for other people too. Um, so what it is, is a free for all is like this unorganized, um, uh, unrestricted, it can, it's like an anything goes. It's anybody can join in, we can do what we want, we can be spontaneous, we can plan ahead, we can, you know, it's just whatever we want. And so what I'm going to do today, I didn't let you know beforehand, but um, I'll try to let you before, know beforehand on some of the other ones so we can participate together. And I think maybe Trisha came on. I can't see if it was you, Trisha, but I assume just because you are here all the time with me. Um, so we're going to do the free for all Friday and we're going to just do, do things that I want to do that I've wanted to try that I haven't had time or I haven't, you know, made time or I think would be fun for you to see the process. And so it'll be a lot more process um, tips and video tips that we do this way, but um, free for all Friday. So yeah, for so for watch for the Fridays, and it'll probably be a little bit earlier in the day for you um, because of light. It just makes it a little bit easier, not necessarily every time, but it makes it a little bit easier to be able to see and that sort of thing. So, um, first off, we missed National Hugging Day in America, in the United States. Missed National Hugging Day. I can't believe we did that. It was Wednesday. I had it in my calendar because Layla was a big hugger and realized that you need so many hugs a day just for emotional well-being and, you know, that we need hugs. And so I was going to talk about that, but we missed it. Oh, I, it doesn't mean we can't hug any. <laughs> at any other point is just that I was going to talk about it that day. So um, also today is Samantha's 21st birthday. She's um, second to the youngest or third to the youngest. And um, so it's her birthday today. So just happy birthday, Sammy. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do, our free for all, is I'm going to do this project with paint pins. And I'm going to talk to you while you watch the process going on. I've taken an Ikea cabinet and I usually buy white Ikea things, yeah, but I didn't read the box and I got a gray one. And I was so disappointed when I did that because, you know, I like I liked it all white. So, so instead of staying disappointed for long, I just realized, you know what, I can practice um, doing something on it that I wouldn't do normally to one of my other pieces that I knew I was going to keep and knew was important to me. The, some of the furniture we got here, um, it's going to stay here because we can't pack up everything to take with us. Um, oh, I hope that light doesn't bother us. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this um, little paint pen on this gray um, cabinet. And I've done a little sketch of what I'm going to do. So. First off, before I start and show you what I, you can do and what I did is I just went to Pinterest. I went to Pinterest for a couple boards and I was looking for floral mo motifs because that's what I wanted to do. So I typed in floral motifs, got some things, but then I realized, um, and I created a board for you so that you could see some of the ideas. Part of the process of creating is to come up with ideas. On some projects, it's great to come up with your own. Something like this, I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I can just copy some other people's ideas or you know take their ideas and put a twist on it. So I went and I typed in floral motifs, looked around there, put them on a, um, a board that I named, what did I name it? Uh, free for all Friday, that's what it, free for all Friday painted Ikea thing. 
drawers. So I named it on my Pinterest board. So there is a board separate for the free for all Fridays. And then I did some more research on my own boards, which one of them was the painted furniture board. And I pulled some of the pick the um, pins that I had from the painted furniture into the free for all Friday. And then also I didn't pull pins from my chalkboard board, create chalkboard and create painted furniture. I didn't pull them across because there were just so many and all of them can just be inspiring. So what you're going to do is do a little research, a little bit, be a little inspired. Oh, and one thing on that board that I put on there that should really inspire you is um, Tana, uh, what's her, uh, Tana, Tanamachi. Tanamachi is her name, last name is Tanamachi Studio, and she is the one who popular, popularized um, chalkboard art. And so she has a video of her doing this wall mural with a paint pen, a gold paint pen on a black, a blackboard, probably black chalkboard, I'm not sure. And it goes through, it's called Flourish, and you can see her process, you can see her make, mark making, how simple it is, but then at the end to see what it turns into. So um, I like this video because one, you don't have to be an artist per se, you just have to be willing to make marks and then just the process of just doing mark after mark and adding them together and then all of a sudden it becomes this this beautiful little wall um project so that i put on that um, pin board too just so you could see it and be inspired and so th but this is what i came up with from those i came up with these i'm going to do this on the top part of this so i'm going to show you that process and, and also i'm going to be talking while i show the process so let's turn you down and around and hopefully this works i think it'll work i think so Okay, so, and I'll tell you about some of the supplies and the process and everything while we're doing it. And I'm just going to move my notes, and I'm going to shake you just a little bit. Okay, put my notes over here so I can read them um, while I'm doing it. So first thing you're going to do is, if you notice, I put a red line and made four quadrants, four squares, four rectangles. So I'm just going to do that same sort of thing. If you want to, oops, if you want to, you can measure it. It might be beneficial. Um, but this is free-handed. So in my research, when I was going through, I decided certain things. I've never done this before. Never taken paint and pen to laminate. So when I was doing a search, I did a search on Pinterest about um, the idea of, you know, what laminate, you know, paint pen on laminate. And there were hardly anything. There was one gal who... Um, did it? Her name's Angie from Timeout and Tootsie Rolls .blogspot .com. And I did link her and she talked about it. She did it at school. So I thought, wow, if you can do it at school and have it last somewhat, then here you go. I took also a composition from that page. Um, the board, I mean, the uh, Free For All Friday board. So you, this is a chalk pencil, so I'm using a chalk pencil. You could use a piece of chalk, I just had this. And I'm using a wipe. I wipe the whole thing off first just to get any kind of oils off of it. So I'm gonna put my word create in the middle. So then I know, okay, this section has to have this and that, you know, so it's kind of broken down a little bit and that my word create has to fit in the middle. So I'm just gonna so it kind of goes above, so I'm going to do above. And then draw big, because this is my biggest flower. We have to remember scale, my biggest flower. Can you see that pretty well? Um, so I draw up, and then down, and up. And then I put a little center, another little floral leaf, I mean a petal. And then... And I'm just getting basic shapes. I can do flourishes as if, if I want. So that's a pretty large flower. So then I do all the large flowers first and I think about scale when I'm doing it because I want small, medium, and large. So there's two over here in this section and they kind of come out right about here. So I'm gonna do this. It's like little teardrop shapes. Oh, that's not a little teardrop shape. That's a huge teardrop shape. So 
the little teardrop shape, and then it's the, do the outer shape first so you know where you're gonna keep your petals. Hmm. Is this working for you guys? So you keep bringing it back to the center or to the edge of the flower. So I have that, now I can fill in like with just a little upside down use or frowny faces or however you want to put, you know, name it. And this can be as full as you want. So then that's another flower. And then this one right here, I'm gonna do the same thing. It's the same thing as his here. So we want some repetitive um, things in this. So that's why I want, I usually put at least two things up, down, up, put the little center in, pedal on the side, pedal on the side, then some back pedals. And this is just the pattern, so we don't have to be precise. We don't even have to be precise when we get it with the pen. So, um, so these, I'm getting my bigger flowers in. Let's see, here's a big flower here or a pretty big one. So it's about there in the, in the rectangle. So I'm gonna put, put it behind like it's behind. So five petals. And then I liked this little shape right here. It was a new one I saw on the, oh, on the Pinterest board, this one right here. I just, it kind of looked like an onion, but it just was this fun little shape. Oops. And you don't have to follow exactly your pattern. This is to kind of give you um, something to work within, but it doesn't have to be precise. So outside, it almost looks like girl hair like this from this angle. And I'm gonna put some leaves. So I'm gonna finish up here, I think, so we can do some. So I'll try to look for comments too every once in a while. I decided when I was researching that I did not want to make it symmetrical because that requires a different skill level. I didn't want to make it, um, I didn't, oops. I didn't want to make it um, a lot of text because that requires a more careful eye. So there's just things that I decided, you know what, stay away from that because I just want this to be a quick project. And those things would end up making it not a quick project. So you have to kind of decide what you want to do for your project and how you want to do it. And I decided I probably wouldn't do too much overlap because then that requires me to pay attention a little bit more. Oh, here's one of those little onion guys again. little teardrop shapes and then the outside shape. I think on this teardrop thing, you can make it almost any kind of shape you want. Just put the lines in to follow whatever shape you've created. And so I'm gonna fill in a little bit of that shape, that area right there. So let's see. I kind of didn't finish that, did I? So I think we need another leaf. And anything I don't like, obviously I can change. And then let's put a few little ones because we have these big ones. And so let's put a few little ones. I'm gonna do it like this one. So it has five petals. I said I was gonna overlap and here I am overlapping. And then one more. Okay, like 
I said I haven't ever done this before. Okay, so we're gonna work with this section right here for right now. Let's see, I'm gonna put... So I've kind of filled in this section. You can see, and then you can also fill in little other doodads. You don't, I mean, you can, you can do little things like that. Okay, so what I'm gonna, going to show you, gonna, <laughs> what I'm going to show you hopefully is I did on the back side of this. Let's see if we can do this without making it fall and everything. So I did on the back side of this, I took the pens that I had, because I grabbed the ones that I had. This is a chalkboard pin, so it's likely not gonna stay on very well at all. So, like that. So that'll come off super easy. But if you just wanna try something and you don't mind it, you know, coming off super easy and just low stress for you that you know it can come off. It's not perfect, it doesn't matter, it can come off. You might wanna try the chalk one. Um, this is an oil-based one. Um, and it can scratch off if you scratch it but it's a little bit harder to scratch off and then there's this acrylic one so they don't you know they you can rub on them you can rub on them and they don't rub off but you can it, they'll scratch and i tried the black one too so i just tried that to see because like i said like i said i didn't i don't i've never done this before so we are just gonna try okay now i'm gonna put you back up i'm gonna put you back up Okay, so we're gonna go back. Is it upside down? It is upside down. Okay, I turned it upside down when we turned it around, but I think this will work. Okay, I think I'm gonna do the big fat one, and you did see the difference in sizes. Um, this is the big fat one and it's acrylic. This is the black one and it's oil-based. This is oil-based and this is the chalkboard one. So I'm gonna do the oil-based and the acrylic together. I think it'll be fine as long as I don't like overlap them where they react against each other. So here's this, this is there. Okay, just checking to see you if you can see. So I'm gonna use the big fat one and it's kind of hard because this big fat one has a squared off nib and it will be a little bit more difficult, so we'll see, we'll see how it turns out. I also wanna work from left to right since I'm right-handed and I don't, because I don't wanna smear my hand in anything. So, um, while we're talking about this, I mean, while you're watching this, I'm going to, okay, my first mark. Sometimes the first mark is the hardest. Okay, so I did not follow my pattern exactly. And I'm gonna wait, I think, nope, I'm just gonna do the tip of it. Now in reality, I could probably scrape that off if I wanted to, but I'm okay with it. And so some of the supplies are obviously the ruler, the chalk, the um, paint pins, and there are all kinds of variety of paint pins. I feel a little shaky because, you know, my, my, my marks are not, because I, my hand's not braced against anything. And that makes it a little bit tough. So if I laid my hand in it, but I'm a little bit afraid if I lay my hand in it, then I'm gonna do away with the design. Okay, we're getting it so far. Let's get these flowers in. I think this big fat nib is a little harder. I do like that it has 
such a big nib that you get big fat lines, but it's a little bit more, it's a little harder to control. So you might want to consider that if you do something like this. Let's do this. Just a scoop. And this is, it starts to get fun when you can do the details. We're not quite to all the details yet in our little flower. It can go off. I'm gonna take this leaf or this branch. I'm kind of remembering don't lift because it's hard to see right here. It's hard to match back up then when you lift the pen. Um, so then we'll put the last leaf into this. Here's that little onion flower. Just kind of reminds me like the curves of a woman just a little the hips and and then we just kind of keep going down up see these are like perfect shapes it's but it's the totality of what you're doing that starts to, I mean, sometimes we look at things and we go, oh, that's terrible. And you know, maybe on its own, it, it is terrible. Sometimes they are little terrible marks, but then once you get things in totality, it starts to really work. So I'm gonna turn it around. So that's what we have so far. So I'm gonna take you out of, so that's what we have so far. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to finish this um, by myself, but I just wanted you to see the, kind of hear the start of things and see the process and how long, I don't know how long that's taken me, let's see. Um, I think it's taken like 20 minutes since I started. So it's not, I mean, this doesn't have to take long. You can take your time with it. You can be quick with it. And um, I kind of will see how it goes and what I decide to do as I go along. Um, but I've wanted to do this while well, we've been here seven months and we got it a month or so after we got here. So it's been six months five, six months that I've had it and I've thought about this and I haven't done it. So that's kind of what Free For All Friday will be like is to just, you know, get things. We're going to like, I think one of the times we'll put together a food board together to see how that works. Um, I have some ideas, but then I also, I'm just going to let whatever's happening kind of dictate that too. Kind of a little bit unstructured. So let me see if there's anything else. If you have any questions of things I didn't talk about, um, just ask in the comments. Oh yeah, so some of the process of, yeah, there was just some process things. Mm. And then if I don't like this, I can remove it with, um, there's several things, but if this lady that I put the video on the Pinterest board, free for all board, um, she takes Expo markers, writes right over the top and then wipes it off. Pretty easy, pretty simple. There's other ways too. Um, yeah, so you need supplies, chalk, chalk pencil, you know, motifs, um, paint pens, acrylic. I used um, acrylic for this one so far. Uh, laminate, count, uh, laminate something or other. Um, a wet paper towel and a ruler and a thumbnail that you've drawn up. So that is it today. The, the tip is our creative process today and to do different new things. And that's what we'll do on Fridays. So um, remember, you have a creative heartbeat, so listen for it. Try the new things. Get out and do the new things. Remember, that's my word for the years, do. So we're going to do some things on Friday. So 
I will see you tomorrow. Bye.